It is a beautiful August Monday night in downtown Cincinnati, and we welcome you to Great American Ballpark. The Reds returning home after the 5-2 and two road trip, and a big series begins tonight with a team directly behind them in the chase for the final National League wildcard spot. Don't look now. The Reds just two and a half games behind the Pirates in the Central, and they have a five-game lead over the visiting Diamondbacks in the wild card. Hi again, everybody, alongside the Cowboy, Jeff Brantley. I'm Tom Brenneman. Welcome, as always, to Reds baseball. And now, Cowboy, you get to August. This is the kind of series you want to be playing in, and these two teams right now are red hot. Yes, they are, Tom. You, you look at what the Reds have been able to do. You look at where the Diamondbacks are right now. Uh, this is the kind of series that you want to play in August and September. You want something on the line. You want the guy that's looking across from you in the other dugout to want it just like you want it. This is going to be a good series. And obviously the Reds have been winning games with pitching. The Diamondbacks have been out slugging clubs, which is really not their M.O. when you look at their overall body of work. But you take a look at the top two RBI guys, at least they have been most of the year in the National League this season. They go head-to-head -head here tonight. Paul Goldschmidt of Arizona and, of course, Brandon. Brandon Phillips of the Red Legs. Both of these guys, Tom, when, when you look especially at Paul Goldschmidt hitting in the number four spot, you want a guy that finishes what he starts. And when this guy comes to the plate, he is all business. As a matter of fact, he just finished his college graduate as far as correspondence courses go. He's got that done. This is a guy that you want when the game's on the line. A student of the game both on the field and off. Brandon Phillips, well, folks, you know all about Brandon. When it's clutch time, this guy's getting the job done. He puts the bat on the baseball seemingly every time he comes to the plate with the runners in scoring position. Whatever the batting average is, with nobody on, you could forget about it when there are guys on. He is some kind of hot. And not only are these guys knocking in runs, but look at when they're knocking in runs as far as go-ahead RBIs, game-winning RBIs, first and second, pick the category, you name it. The late-inning go-ahead run batted in, tied for first. So those are the guys you wanted to play for your team. Well, they are, Tom. I think any time that you're back fourth in a lineup, it's all about being clutch, especially late in the ball game. Both of these guys getting it done. It'll be up to the opposition's pitchers. Make sure that doesn't happen. When we come back, we'll talk about the pitching matchup tonight. We'll get a look at Wilson Delgado for the first time, second time this year. And, of course, Bronson Arroyo starting it for the red leg.
by Tri-State Orthopedics. Here's Scott Demick from the WKRC Weather Department. Hello everyone, I'm meteorologist Scott Dimmick at first pitch tonight for the Diamondbacks taking on the Reds at GABP. We'll have a temperature around 80 degrees. We're into the upper 70s for the seventh inning stretch with a clear sky. Some more high-level clouds move in for the final out. We'll drop down into the mid-70s as you head back from the game. Enjoy the game on Fox Sports Ohio. Very much. Reds get a look for the second time this year. And right-hander Randall Delgado came over to deal from the Atlanta Braves during the offseason. Be a lot of strikes thrown by this young man tonight early in his career, especially back in the Braves days. Had difficulty commanding the strike zone. Now, he may throw too many strikes. Up against Bronson Arroyo. Talk about throwing strikes. He can create every which way there is to create to throw any pitch over the plate for a strike. Boy, he's coming off back-to-back -back sensational outings. Take a look at the ERA. 0.6 in back-to-back -back wins. I think the big key, Tom, is establishing the fastball early in the ball game. Yes, you say, well, Bronson is a breaking ball pitcher. It all revolves around the fastball. When he has that pitch, everything else follows him up. Well, certainly a series that could have playoff implications begins tonight. The first of four, the Reds and the Arizona Diamondbacks. First pitch right around the bend. Truck in America, 36 straight years by Cincinnati USA Regional Tourism Network. Book your stay at CincinnatiUSA.com. And by Skyline Chili, feeling good. It's Skyline time. Crowd rolling into the Great American Ballpark on this Monday night. Reds on the heels, winning five of seven through Chicago and Milwaukee. But now you up the ante with a competition. Kirk Gibson's Arizona Diamondbacks come in six games over the 500 mark. And their starting lineup, Gerardo Parra in right field, Adam Eaton in center, Paul Goldschmidt, the league leader, and runs batted in at first. Aaron Hill red hot at second, Martin Prado at third, Jason Kubel at left. Will Nieves for the injured Miguel Montero, D.D. Gregorius, a one-time red at short, and Delgado on the mound. And, of course, looking for win number 12 in a red uniform this year tonight is Bronson Arroyo. Big task for Arroyo tonight. Keep Parra and Eaton off base, but also keep Aaron Hill in the ballpark. Let the chips fall where they may with Goldschmidt, but if you keep guys off base, that single shot will be just that, one run. 
All right, eat no two ways about it. When they're getting on base, things are happening for the Diamondbacks. So we'll see indeed how Arroyo fares against that duo. And here we go. It is strike one on the outside corner. This one underway. Only pitcher in Major League Baseball to start 10 or more games to not allow the very first batter of the game to reach base. How about that? It's pretty amazing. Far at 278 home runs, 30 runs batted in, has 30 doubles. He can really run. And a one hopper, what a pick by Votto, and the race to the bag is won by Arroyo. Well, you didn't get it then out of your mouth long, and that was a bullet to first base. Well, Votto has to fall backwards in order to get the proper hop there. So a nice play right from the get go by the Reds first baseman and here comes Adam Eaton. Eaton has missed a lot of time with an injury this year at 242 only playing in his 29th game as a home run and seven runs batted in. Went on the DL in June. In spring training you may remember when he strained his left elbow and he was not activated until a little more than a month ago on July the 9th. Cleared house for this guy. Justin Upton gone. Chris Young gone. And then he was gone for a while. Of course, the Reds have had their primary big injuries occur to their pitching staff. The Diamondbacks have been with their position players, whether you're talking about Cody Ross or Jason Kubel or Eaton. Eric Chavez has been down. Aaron Hill just back after suffering a broken hand. So a lot of very important pieces of their lineup have missed a pile of games. Especially with Aaron Hill. Not only is he a key cog in your defense up the middle, but he bats fourth in your lineup to protect Goldschmidt. One and two on him. And a tapper over the mound. Do or die play because Eaton can run and safe the call and infield hit. One extra hop allows Eaton to reach. And you're right, Tom. He can pick him up and put him down. Well, that was not even really close on that play at first base. Now, we mentioned that Eaton has missed so much time this season. So a big part of his arsenal, of course, the legs, the run game. Eden, a native Buckeye, grew up just up the road in Springfield, Ohio, still makes his home there and played collegiately at Miami of Ohio. Went to Kenton Ridge High School in Springfield. So here's a league leader and runs batted in here at Paul Goldschmidt. 295 batter, 30 home runs, and 96 runs batted in. You've got to believe that Arroyo's got a little bit of vengeance on his mind, especially after his last big start came against St. Louis, and it was not pretty. When you talk about beating clubs that are chasing you or trying to beat a club that you're chasing, you've got to have a good pitching performance if you're on the Reds ball club. Goldschmidt, a native Texan, played collegiately at Texas State University. He was an eighth round draft pick in 2009. He wasn't in the minor leagues very long. About two and a half years, and the Diamondbacks got him in the big leagues in 2011. Shoots one into right field, a base hit. Eaton slams on the brakes in second. So back to back one out hits, two on for Aaron Hill. Take a look at the Reds defensively tonight, presented by your four dealers. Chu flanked by Ryan Ludwig and Jay Bruce in the outfield. Cozart and Brandon up the middle. Frazier and Votto on the corners. Arroyo and Hannig in the battery. Well, this is how it was supposed to be from day one. Boy, Hill is red hot. An 11 game hitting streak. 21 hits in his last 47 at bats. That is a 447 batting average. Strike one. And this guy pulls everything. But the thing about Aaron Hill is he stays inside the ball, even with a pitch away. 
you try to get a ground ball thinking he'll roll over the top. He rips it right over the shortstop's head. Many may recall that Hill was an all star for the first time in his major league career a year ago. Slow roller. Votto, they get one. Can they double up Hill? Arroyo covering. They got him and had a in the inning. Wow, that was a tough double play there. Three, six, one, almost an impossibility. Area already revved back up, but some youngsters in attendance tonight nonetheless. And the Reds batting order under manager Dusty Baker as Chu, Frazier, Votto at the start, Phillips, Bruce, and Ludwig in the middle, Cozart handing in Arroyo the latter third. As they get a look for the second time this year, they've already beaten Randall Delgado once this season, their lone win in three games out at Phoenix earlier this summer. I think you have a pretty good idea what you're going to get from everyone. In that lineup, but Frazier and Ludwig, they're the wild cards. Ball one to Chu, a 277 batter, 15 home runs, 37 runs batted in, 27 doubles, and of course, only Votto walks with more frequency than Chu. One and one to Chu. The Reds can get some right handed hitting production down the stretch. Things could get awfully interesting. It is interesting to know you look at the right handed batters in the Reds lineup and we're talking about collectively over the entire year. Reds right handed batters are hitting 229 and that includes the kind of year Phillips is having and really the recent good hitting of Devin Mezzarocco. But only the Florida Marlins have been worse in those three categories from their right handed batters than this Reds team among all National League clubs. I think it also shows how much the Reds have missed Ryan Ludwig in the lineup as well. Well, Ludwig had a couple of hits in the game yesterday. Now, they weren't Rockets, but Dusty Baker said, hey, look, when you start off 0 for 11 and you're just trying to get it going, you take, <laughs> take the two it. hits. So who knows? Two and two to two. Ball three. Tom Ryan continues to talk about timing at the play. And I, and I would imagine any hitter that is a home run hitter as Ludwig is you want to be able to be on time and drive the ball. But right now he's making contact and you can accelerate from there. If you're missing everything that's a different story. Had him way out in front but contact and able to roll and foul his chew and the count again remains at three balls and two strikes. 
38 games to go for the Reds. 24 of the 38 will be played here at Great American Ballpark, where the Reds have won 37 and lost only 20. On the ground to Goldschmidt, and that's an easy play for the first out. Arizona very good on defense this year. And their defense presented by your four dealers. Kubel in left field, Eaton in center, and Parr in right. Parr can really go get the ball. Goldschmidt Hill, we know about Gregorius, perhaps one day a gold glove winning shortstop with Prado back in third. And a battery of Nieves who continues to spell the injured Miguel Montero. When the Reds were in Arizona earlier, Montero was hitting in that number four spot. Todd Frazier lines it hard into left field and caught out there by Kubel. I think that ball found Kubel more than he found it. I think Kubel realized there was no chance he was going to be able to run back and catch it. Cut your losses and jump and hope I can elevate. And he did. Well, that was scalded. So two up, two down, and now Joey Botto the batter. Joey has reached base safely in 19 consecutive games, the longest active streak in the National League, the third longest in all the baseball behind Mike Trout and Miguel Cabrera. Trout has reached base in 40 straight games. No sophomore slump <laughs> for Mr. Trout. And of course, you can virtually choose any hitting statistic, category, streak, number. Miguel Cabrera's name will show up very early. Two and two, Nevada. He's talking with Jim Leland, the manager of the Tigers, in the lobby of the hotel in Chicago. We we're talking about RBIs, and he said, "This kid will expand the zone." If an RBI is on the line, he's talking about Cabrera. And I guess every manager calls their players kids, even though Cabrera has been around a while. But that's a hot topic of discussion. You wonder, all right, well, how much do your quality hitters expand the plate without just getting themselves out? And I know that topic comes up a lot when Joey Votto was at the plate. Of course, Votto will tell you that his goal every year is to not make an out. And his goal every game is to not make an out. And that is a tall order for anybody in this game, as we know. Well, you want your guys to strive for per perfection. On the ground of Goldschmidt, he'll wave off Delgado this time, and that's all for the Reds. They go in order. And we go to inning number two of a scoreless game at Great American Ballpark.
This coming Thursday, it's a senior day special thanks to Tri-State Centers for Sight. All Reds fans 16 and older can buy a non-premium ticket at half price. Now make sure you do it in advance of game day to get this special offer. The Reds and the Diamondbacks this Thursday, 12:35 first pitch. 5133-81 Reds, a number to dial or log on to Reds.com slash tickets. Start the second inning here in Cincinnati. Scoreless game and Arroyo flips it up there. Strike one to the former Atlanta Brave Martin Prado. Prado, another Diamondback batter that has found quite a bit of consistency with the bat here lately. Prado, along with tonight's starter, Randall Delgado, involved in that huge offseason trade between the Diamondbacks and the Atlanta Braves. That was a deal that sent outfielder Justin Upton from Arizona, former number one pick of the Diamondbacks. As it turns out, you could make an argument that the best player in that deal was infielder Chris Johnson. Because Upton had the unbelievable April. He has been really less than an average player ever since then as there's a fly ball to the center field for the first out here in the inning. Well Johnson has just kept getting better and better and better. What an Upton at 14 uh, home runs something like that in the first month of the year and I saw where he just hit his 23rd home run of the season two days ago. He got off to a very quick start in Atlanta. Now Kubel, here's a guy that seems to tear up the Reds every time he has a chance to suit up against him, but he comes limping into this series, and they hope it stays that way. Over the last month, seven hits in a month for Kubel, spanning 63 at bats. That's a 111 average. And you fall behind and put him on a hitter's count at 2-0. Now the last thing that you want to do is wake this guy up on day one when you've got three games remaining here in this week against this club. Get him out. Keep him in that lull. Riano to Kubel. Arroyo remarkably has only walked one. Of the last 92 batters that he has faced, 92 batters, one walk issued by Bronson Arroyo. And the reason that it's so amazing is because of the myriad of pitches that he uses. He's not just a fastball thrower. Well, he's come back from 3 0 to run it full. And even the fastball, Tom, has so much movement on it, you, you shake your head when you read that statistic. One walk. With all those pitches. Now the payoff coming to Kubel. And we'll do it once more. When you look at the overall body of work, not just here of late, but Arroyo closing in on 160 innings this season. And you see only Wayne Wright and Cliff Lee, a pair of all stars, have had more pinpoint accuracy than Arroyo, and he comes back from 3-0 to Fan Kubel, and that time got him with a changeup. Oh, what a good pitch here, Tom. This ball's right in the heart of the plate. Kubel sees it as a fastball, 3-2. He's unloading, and the ball's not even there by the time the bat passes through the strength zone. How does a guy throw a changeup from three quarters or side on? Uh, you know. I don't know. You've got to really speed the arm up. You've got to make sure that your grip is right on the money and probably above all else. You better have some kind of confidence in it. I don't have to ask that question with a even a hint of facetiousness about it. You just think about the standard grip that most guys use and to think about throwing that from almost down under right and to calculate the movement that you're going to have on it as well. I think when you hear Arroyo talk about being in a rhythm and being in sync, I think that's where all of those things come from. And it's the body, it's the mind, and the catcher, the way that he sets up as well. One and two on Will Nieves. Nieves has done a good job for this team, playing in his 52nd game, a 340 batter, with a home run and 21 runs batted in. Done an excellent job behind the plate. 
And that is a fair ball. Hannigan's got it. And that's all for Arizona in the second. We're scoreless with the Reds coming up. Their chase for the NL Central Division title. Kevin Goheen says a Bengals offense getting better every day. And the Buckeyes will be starting two new cornerbacks in their season opener just 12 days from now. FoxSportsOhio.com. All the coverage brought to you by 1 800 Safe Auto Drive Safe Spend Less. Of course, we honor a member of the military and recognize all members of the military at Great American Ballpark. But how about Private First Class Sergeant Robert Miller? A World War II veteran served in the South and Central Pacific Islands during World War II. We thank you, young man, for your service. Wow. Looking good, too. He does look good. Strike one to Brandon Phillips. And now strike two. Phillips to be followed by Jay Bruce and then Ryan Ludwig. Scoreless game with the Reds batting in inning number two. Tommy, you were talking earlier about the strength throwing ability of Bronson Arroyo. I think we're going to see the same from one Randall Delgado here tonight as well. A lot of strikes from both of these right handers. One young, one a little older. But pitching young. Yes. Nothing wrong with being a veteran. Mm -hmm. Especially when you're going like Arroyo's oh. point. He seems to be getting better and better after that one hiccup year a couple of years ago when he left Arizona with Valley fever and was just never quite right. The only big league season as a full time starter for Arroyo where he failed to get to 200 innings and that year was 199. Straight away center field that ball hit well and Eaton will get chase and will not get it. This could be three bases for Phillips. He will make the turn and here he comes for third. Throw in there and he's sliding in safely with a triple. When you talk about the most exciting play in baseball. That's one of them if not the best. Especially as the ball goes off the wall, you see Phillips throw it into high gear as he rounds first base, knowing that the ball got away from Eaton. And Eaton's got a good arm now, and Phillips kicks it in. So now a runner at third base, first triple of the season for Brandon Phillips. 
And now Jay Bruce looks at ball one away. The Reds are number one in the National League as far as percentage of runners driven in from third with less than two men out. A number not nearly as high, I think, as a lot of people who watch baseball on a regular basis. The National League average with a runner at third and less than two out. 49% of the time you get them in, and the Reds are at 53%. And after that last road trip, they bumped it up to 55%, and that one taken inside. Two balls and a strike. Tom, you look at the left side of this infield, you've got three guys to the right side. This is an RBI situation for Bruce. Anything on this side of the field, you've got a run score. Three and oh. Or make your point, three balls and a strike. Now to Bruce. With Ryan Ludwig waiting on deck. You wonder how much he'll give him to hit. Delgado has pitched Bruce very similar to Votto and Chu earlier. Fastballs in, chains up away, trying to get him to roll over the ball. And there is ball four to Bruce. First walk issued by Delgado. So they're on the corners with none out. And Ludwig with a gold plated chance to get his first RBI. In this injury more in 2013 season. Well, if you're the Diamondbacks here, Tom, I would imagine that you would trade a double play for a run. They'll play double play depth up the middle. And actually, Martin Prado still backing up at third base. I thought maybe he might be in a little bit just in case they're going on. Looks like they're playing for two all the way around. Ready for that first pitch fastball, but too far out in front of it. Strike one. Ludwig, as many of you know, injured on opening day, sliding into third base where the Angels were in town. And just back. Playing tonight in just his seventh game of the season. And this one has popped up and appears to be playable. One out. Like a changeup that stayed up in the strike zone. Got out in front a little bit, popped it up. That's the timing that Ludwig was talking about before the ball game. A little bit early on the fastball, as you were saying, Tom. And Whole body moving forward there on the changeup. A very important bat here for Kozart with runners on the corners and one out in the inning. Scoreless game. Zach does have 40 runs batted in. Ball one. I wonder if Dusty might even put a squeeze play on here with the prowess of Kozart to bunt. Trying to stay away from the double play. Kozart does lead the National League in sacrifice bunts. But at the same time, he's also tied for the National League lead in sacrifice fly balls. And of course, there is an inherent gamble with the suicide squeeze that oh, yeah. obviously does not come with. Letting him swing away. Letting him turn it loose. One and one. Fly ball should be deep enough to bring in Phillips. Eaton prepares for the throw. Here comes Brandon. Here comes a throw to the plane, and it gets by the catcher, and it's one nothing Reds. Much closer than what it appeared to be as Eaton caught the ball. got to the plate a whole lot faster than what I thought and if that ball had actually been a little bit lower and taken a long hop to the plate versus that short hop Diamondbacks would have had a play on Phillips and as we talk about all the time that is the big challenge for a center fielder is not only making a good throw an accurate throw but the mound creates the obstacle of where you have to throw it 
by the mound. Unlike one of the corner outfielders. If you hit the side of the mound, it's going to carry them off every time, one way or the other. Try to get that long hop where it's just over the top of the pitching rubber. Now Ryan Hannigan coming off a, a very good day yesterday. The Reds had 10 singles in the game in the victory over Milwaukee yesterday. Hannigan seven games. This is fifth start since he came off the DL. Hit the ball very hard in that series against Milwaukee, and they're hoping uh, Cowboy that'll get him started. And you hope that the Diamondbacks will gamble and pitch to Hannigan here. He's been swinging the bat much better. Got the pitcher on deck. A lot of times you'll see a pitcher just off the plate away, just off the plate in. Try to see if the eight hole hitter will swing at a pitch that may be a ball. You walk in, you've lost nothing. You've got the pitcher coming to the plate with two down. And that one lined into the bit of Goldschmidt. So they pitch to him, and they get him out of the line drive, and the Reds on the board. And a two leading one nothing. Injuries call 1 800 Elk Ohio. The last 15 games, you take the three against the Cardinals where the Reds pitching staff allowed 31 runs. And take a look, Cowboy, what has transpired since then, not even reaching that 31 number. Well, you look at what the Reds do offensively, and you look at really the, the way the Reds hit the ball on the road trip. Even though they put together a five and two trip, it was the pitching that got everything done. Sometimes that's just the way it is. And it happens to coincide with the fact that you go back to that date when the Cardinals left town. The Reds found themselves seven games behind the Pirates. In the National League Central Division. And now they're two and a half back. Pirates, by the way, are probably hanging out right now at Petco Park in San Diego, dialed into this game. You know, the pessimists will say, well, the, the Reds beat the Cubs and the Brewers, the bottom dwellers in the division. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you beat. Right now, you just need a win. Well, and really look no further than uh, what the Pirates have been going through here lately, what the Cardinals went through the last time they played the Cubs. They lost two out of three. You know, you just take a look at, at those three teams for a minute and how sometimes certain stats sometimes can be overrated. Sometimes they tell the whole story. 
But, you know, with all that we've made, and I've been as guilty as anybody of talking about how poorly the Reds have played against teams over the 500 mark. If you talk about the Cardinals coming in here winning two out of three, the Reds turning around sweeping the Cubs three in a row, the Cardinals losing two <laughs> out of three. I know. To the Chicago Cubs. After all the stiff and through all that noise, the Reds went four and two, and the Cardinals went three and three. Makes there's a fly ball to Chew in center, and Gregorius retired to begin the inning. Makes you scratch your head. And it goes back to those three teams playing each other. The Reds have a tough time with the Cardinals. The Cardinals have a tough time with the Pirates. And the Pirates have a tough time with the Reds. And it's going to get, get interesting the closer we get to the end of September. Cardinals have a very difficult schedule up until the last two weeks, you know, 17, 18 games. Then they play teams that are under 500. And by the way, the Cardinals have not started. They'll uh, get underway in about 25 minutes from now. They'll be playing the team the Reds just finished up against, the Milwaukee Brewers. That'll be at eight. five minutes after 8 Eastern time. As Delgado's behind, nothing in two against Arroyo. And the Pirates, as we mentioned, play late tonight in San Diego. That'll be a road trip San Diego and on to San Francisco. Gone on strike still. Got oh, two strikeouts in the game for Bronson. So, you know, let's look at it big picture the rest of the way because we're down to less than 40 games remaining in this season. The Reds have the most games against teams over 500, but it's only three more than the Cardinals and five more than the Pirates. But the Reds have the most home games. If you include tonight, that number would be 24. I think the, the big issue is those three teams there will be playing a lot of each other as the month of September approaches. And that's all you can ask for. I want to be able to play the team and beat the team that is ahead of me. That chance is coming. On the outside corner, a strike to Paro hit a rocket. It was gloved beautifully, falling down in backhanded form by Vado. Fed Arroyo at the bag in time to get him. Arroyo allowed an infield hit to Adam Eaton with one out in the first inning. A single to Goldschmidt followed that. But he got the double play ball off the bat of Aaron Hill. And has retired six straight. Beauty. You look at that pitch that starts off the plate and catches the outside corner, a backdoor breaking ball. The pitch prior to that was a changeup that started on the outside corner and then just dove down and away. Talk about making X's on the outside corner. Or a breaking ball, the changeup out there, a fastball running off the plate, and then a changeup that stays there for a, a strike. Or it just did get a piece of the last one. Got a piece of it again. That was an arm slot, Tom. Normally from Arroyo, when he comes straight over the top, that's when you're going to see the fastball. And that was a curveball there. So once more, the break even pitch as Arroyo tries to retire Para and tie a ribbon around this Arizona third inning, which he does. Back to back strikeouts to end the perfect third. Three of them all told in a game for Arroyo.
Jay Onright, Dan O'Toole, joined by Donovan McNabb, Gary Payton, Andy Roddick, Carissa Thompson. Everything you need to know about the world of sports, Fox Sports Live on every night now on Fox Sports 1, kicking off over the weekend. Big weekend for the entire Fox family. Reds with a 1-0 lead. I tell you, a pretty good crowd here tonight for a Monday night with school back in session. We had heard that uh, to expect a rather smallish crowd. Now, granted, there aren't many folks in the outfield bleachers, but a lot of folks around the bowl. Yeah, not bad. And boy, what a beautiful night it is. Weather for the better part of, what, two weeks has just been beyond belief. Here in Cincinnati as Arroyo is quickly gone to begin the third inning and I'd like to remind you that if they read it's a home run off that Toyota sign during our game and I Emily Frank of Covington will win the new Tundra on display each and every day great American ballpark and you can still register for a chance to win it just stop by your Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky Toyota dealer Emily good luck. Back to the top of the order we go. Reds leading 1 0. Chu bounced out to Goldschmidt at first, his first time up. Second time through the lineup should prove a little bit better for the Reds. You've already seen the starting pitcher. You have a pretty good idea about what he's got for that given day. Now you make an adjustment. Two and one to two. So Chu sort of shake his head right there after not doing more damage on that 2 0 pitch. And two and one fouls back another fastball. I just have to wonder, even though Chu will not say it, you wonder if the left thumb is still continuing to bother. He's got it taped up underneath that left glove. It's his top hand, but it's also the guide hand that helps you get to the ball, especially the pitch that's running away from him. Chu went to a full count his first time up before grounding out. Full count again here. And he walks this time. Fourteen steals in 22 attempts for Shinsu Chu, and here comes Frazier, who swung at the first pitch his first time up and hit a laser. Had a hit taken away on a leaping grab made by Kubel in left field. Let's see if Delgado remembers Frazier jumping on that first pitch fastball and starts him with a breaking ball or a changeup here. Came with a fastball, but well off the inside corner. Pretty good move there by the right hander Delgado. Quick feet, shortening up the arm mark. Take the glove, take the ball out of the glove, you go straight to the ear, and then you snap throw to first base. Runner going and sliding right into the glove of Hill is Chu, so he's cut down for the second out. Delgado gets rid of this ball quickly. Even though he brought the knee up, he was quick to home plate. And Nieves, even though that ball started to tail on him a little bit, he got the ball to second base well ahead of Chu of Chu's arrival. I almost wonder with Chu looking back that was as he was run. running if that was a missed hit and run. He looks like that's what he's talking about right now. Because normally you don't look back. Not on a straight steal. 
See him take off. Watch the head. See him turn back there. That's when you turn back if it's a hit and run. There was no swing on the play. He's walking over to Dusty Baker now and perhaps asking him something along those same lines. Well, somebody missed a sign there because you wouldn't be having this conversation with Dusty. Or would you have raised your hands? In the dugout, unless there was some semblance of confusion. Three and two once more on Frazier. And a high fly ball should end the inning, right side of the infield. Hill out there to get it. And that's all for the Reds in the third. One to nothing, Cincinnati. Adam Eaton delivered the game winning two run double in the 16th inning. The Diamondbacks beat the Pirates 4 to 2. And the left hander that was on the mound for the Pirates. Major League debut for Chris Johnson, six innings, and he ends up pitching great baseball, and they just happened to dump one in on him to put two on the board in that sixth inning. Now take a look at this and we'll come back to this because there's a lot to digest here for a minute over the last two years. The Pirates have played marathon games that have either started or been nearly at the start of what has been their second half meltdowns over the last two years. 2011 the 19 inning loss on the botch call at the end of July only won 19 more games the rest of the year. Then another marathon against the Cardinals last season. They would win only 16 more times the rest of the year. And you can rest assured that that is all they're talking about in Pittsburgh right now. They've lost three consecutive series. As there's a line drive into center field, and Chu initially came in, able to run it down, and Eaton retired to begin the fourth inning. No one would dare suggest. That that kind of collapse is going to happen to those Pirates this year. It's a better team this year than they've been, Cowboy. I think you would agree the last two years, but. Still concerned. Yes. The confidence factor, I would imagine, begins to get a wee bit wobbly. Well, you, you can have all the confidence in the world in your dugout and in your locker room, but the folks that are out there in the media that, that write and talk about this game. Everybody's good and even fans in the stands Tom, you know this everybody is wondering Are they gonna fold up again and until you actually make it there that question is still going to be there 
and with every loss. The heat gets turned up with every win. Then the excitement gets turned up. It is part of the process. Mm -hmm. We know one guy that is not going to let it affect anybody, and that's Kurt Clint Hurdle. Yeah. I mean, much like the Reds manager, Dusty Baker, and uh, there are a number of other managers out there. They're so upbeat as far as their optimism is concerned. There's a fly ball that you will have an easier time with in right center, and Goldschmidt retired two away here in the inning. Well, as always, coming up later tonight during the game, we'll have our Miller Time moment presented by Miller Light. I think every manager, Tom, sets the tone for their ball club. When you panic as a manager or you show nervousness or you're uncomfortable, you step out of what your normal routine is, your players sense that. And I think for Clint Hurdle, the only thing that, that he can do is to keep them moving in the right direction and stay positive, as you said. Continue to boost the confidence of his player. Aaron Hill bounced into that inning ending 3 6 1 double play his first time up. Hits this one hard into left field, and we are tied as a hitting streak for Aaron Hill reaches 12 consecutive games. Well, that is the normal swing of Aaron Hill. That's what we've seen of late. From this Diamondback second baseman, he gets on top of the plate and he pulls everything that's close. Really out of ordinary for him to hit the ball the other way as he did the first time into the double play. See a breaking ball here and it just spins middle and out over the plate. That's hammer time. Nice play by that young man in the front row. Looked like Hill caught that ball a little bit off the end of the bat. But he got enough of it. And it's a 1 1 game with two down and none on here in the fourth inning. Strike one to Para Prado. That's the one thing that Arroyo does not want to let any club do, and that's sit on the breaking balls. You have to throw just enough fastballs. To keep them honest. Through the hole in the left field, a base hit. All three pitches there to Prada were fastballs. So after retiring nine in a row. The home run now the single. Will keep the inning alive for Kubel who struck out swinging his first time up. And as much as anything Tom those last two batters. Prado and Hill it was location as much as it was. Pitch selection. When the ball's up. Gets hit whether you're throwing hard or not. Be swinging the bat real well coming into this series, but he's still a dangerous threat in this lineup to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Breaking ball on the outside corner, one and two to Kubel. Ball on the first pitch, change up inside the back door breaking ball for strike two. That was the change up there, it was down, but that's the pitch that Arroyo got him to swing and miss on 3 2, the first at bat.
Two and two to Kubel and came back down and in on it and got him to swing and miss and that'll end the inning. But a game tying home run by Hill not sings it one apiece. Kroger meal deal check in session stands throughout the ballpark for the Kroger meal deal you get a hot dog 16 ounce coke chips and during this homestand Welsh's fruit snacks make sure to get your Kroger meal deal all that for just nine dollars. One run four hits for Arizona one run one hit. For well, the Reds, their only hit was a three base hit off the bat of Brandon Phillips leading off the second inning. And he scored on a one out sack fly from Kozai. Part of the order, Votto Phillips Bruce here at inning number four. Strike one. Tom, we really haven't seen a whole lot of breaking balls from Delgado. It's either been a fastball or a changeup. Down the left field line over to try and cut it off his Kubel and he will do so holding Votto to a single to start the inning. They play Votto to hit the ball the other way otherwise this is probably a double if you're playing straight up as this ball goes to the third base side of a diving third baseman. Kubel not gifted with a whole lot of speed, but he was shaded that way on Votto. So now Brandon, who tripled into the deepest part of left center field, scored the Reds' lone run back in the second inning. A little tardy on that first pitch fastball. Dropped into left center field. That'll be a base hit. Votto going on to second base. So singles from Votto and Phillips. A good start to this Reds fourth inning. Over the top curveball there from Delgado. Not a pitch we've seen a whole lot. That one just spins right over the top of the plate. Phillips smokes it. Most of the time for Brandon he's trying to shoot the ball into that right center field gap especially with a runner aboard and that curveball just played right into his hands. Cowboy you brought up when the Reds turned the lineup over for the second time starting in that third inning that they should perhaps have better luck against Mr. Delgado. Well four batters have 
come to the plate for a second time. Three of the four have reached base safely. A walk and now a pair of hits. And here's Jay Bruce who walked his first time up. This is the time you got to cash it in. You get a chance to put a pitcher's feet to the fire. You want to make it hurt a little bit. Make him remember this. And the right center field. That'll be a base hit. They're going to wave around Votto. Throw goes into second base, and the Reds have taken a two to one lead on a hit by Jay Bruce. Just with a change up away to Jay Bruce, and he has to come back with a fastball. Well, Jay was sitting all over this pitch. Starts middle, never gets off the plate, and that'll bring manager Kurt Gibson to the mound, not Charles Nagy, the pitching coach. 81st run batted in this season for Jay Bruce. And Kurt Gibson looking immediately at the catcher, Nieves, before he then turns his attention to Delgado. Gibson came out with some scathing words for the suspended Milwaukee Brewer, Ryan Broad. And, and you know, you, you think about Braun and his suspension and, and all the other players that have been in the news of late surrounding the biogenesis case. And it's all about the individual. I thought that Gibson did a marvelous job looking at it from the team perspective as he went back and and relived the 2011 postseason when Milwaukee beat Arizona. Three games to two in the division series. That's a best out of five, as you know. And how Braun in that final game hit a home run. Obviously a game won by Milwaukee. As there's a base hit by Ludwig, and that'll be his first RBI of the year. Brandon scores. They're going to hold up Bruce. Four straight hits for the Red Legs, and welcome back Ryan Ludwig. Now that will do something for your confidence any point in time in the season. A breaking ball. Ludwig stays right on it and hits it right down the third base line. Martin Prado getting dirty over there at third base. He's been leaping into the air now a couple of times this inning. First extra base hit, first run batted in in his 2013 season for Ryan Ludwig. He has a new song when he walks up to the plate now. The old Aerosmith, he back in the saddle again. <laughs> He's back in the saddle again now. Sharp ground ball will bring in another run. Nicely done by Kozai. Three runs before the first out is recorded in this fourth inning. Reds have really done a good job this second time around, not over swinging because of the changeup of Delgado, but just staying through the ball, saying to yourself, I'm going to hit this ball back up the middle of the other way. That way you're on time with the breaking ball. We've seen two curveballs hit in this inning that were crushed, both off the bat of Phillips and Ludwig. I brought up earlier Delgado when a ball is put in play opponents batting 517 against him on the first pitch third highest mark in the National League. And you see the National League average when you put it in play on the first pitch is up over 330. Should be noted no team in the National League swings at the first pitch with more frequency than the Reds. But their problem is they haven't been a good first pitch hitting team. They are close to 35 points below that league average. Sometimes it's what you're trying to do with that first pitch. If you're thinking lift and separate, try to hit the ball out of the ballpark, a lot of times you're going to come up empty. And really, you look at tonight, Cowboy, they swung in the first pitch five times already. Two outs, two foul balls, only one hit. 
And you're taught as a pitcher, get strike one. So that graphic, Arizona consequently, uh, they are a team which rarely swings at the first pitch. Infield drawn in, 3 0 on Hannigan. You can rest assured he would have the green light in this situation with a runner at third and one out. But it's nowhere near the strike zone, and he takes a walk. Now, this was a little different approach from Delgado than what we saw in Hannigan's first at bat with two outs. After Hannigan lined that ball into the glove of Goldschmidt, this go around, they put him on and try to play for a double play off of the bat of Arroyo, but I got to believe Arroyo's bunting here. Of course, you never know with a veteran pitcher at the plate and the way that he can pull the bat back and swing. Arroyo, four hits, 44 at bats, does have 10 sacrifices this year. Diamondbacks believe he's bunting, and that pitch almost hit him. Made contact with a bat, strike one. Was almost a self preservation attempt at bunting there with the ball running in on him. Royo jumping back, trying to get that right hand out of the way. That's his money maker. Mm -hmm. Oh, it two. Despite his 10 sacrifices, Arroyo would be the first to tell you that he has not had a good bunting season this year. You may remember his last start was unable to put down a sacrifice. Falling behind here on two. Will they ask him to bunt for a third time? He's already shortening up. Pulls it away, took a hack, and somehow, someway, he got a piece of that ball. <laughs> How did that happen? That was not textbook, <laughs> but it works nonetheless. Pulls the bat back, he flinches, and still able to foul it off. Curveball started right at him. Not sure if he wanted to get out of the way or swing. He did both. Oh, and two on Arroyo pulls it out away again and a bouncer and they come to the play. Nope, they have a run down. And now Gregorius will catch. One wick from behind. Two outs in the inning. Looked like Ludwig was going to start home. And a little bit of indecision there catches him in the rundown, but I think that Prado was coming to the plate either way. So Hannigan advances on to second base, and here is Chu batting for the third time, and we're only in the bottom of the fourth inning. Reds have scored three. And his fourth to break a 1 1 tie. She twice has worked the count full against Delgado. His first time up, he bounced out to Goldschmidt at first and then walked in the third inning. So that second time through the order is now we're beginning the third time through. The Reds against Delgado. Six base runners, four hits, and two walks. Chew not sure about that call by the home plate umpire Gary Darling. Delgado is not missing a whole lot of bats. That's a pitcher's pitch right there. It starts a little bit in off the plate and runs right back to the corner. We've not seen Delgado come in. Much with a fastball to righties or lefties here tonight. Goes away with that change up. 
Chu able to foul it off. Still a ball to two strikes. That's when your changeup is the most effective. After you have gotten the ball inside, you get that borderline strike call. The hitter has it in his mind. And then you're able to locate a changeup away as he did there. Gets through and both runners would advance. Crossed him up. Nieves has put down a fastball. Delgado shook him off. He put down a fastball again. And he delivers a changeup to the plate. And that's just not being on the same page with your catcher. Take a look at that number compared to the rest of the league. That is a Staggering number. 47 wild pitches. Got to block the baseball with runners aboard. This is the big leagues. So many times as a catcher, and we see it all the time. You see catchers try to glove the ball on the bounce. That's not what you're taught to do. You're taught to block the ball and keep it in front of you. That one in the air, foul territory, and out of play. We showed you the wild pitches. That was just from the Arizona starters. You throw in the bullpen. 64 wild pitches. Just comparatively speaking, the Reds have 39. Well, it tells you the job that Ryan Hannigan and Devin Mazarocco have done of keeping the ball in front of them. And Corky. And Corky with the runners aboard. Still three and two on Shinsu Chu. You have to have enough confidence in the mound to know that you can bounce a breaking ball or a changeup with a runner aboard. If you don't have that confidence in your catcher to block it, you're going to leave pitches up and they're going to get crushed. Once more, the payoff on Chu. Strike three called, the inning is over, but a good inning for the Reds. They come up with three runs, stranding a pair, and lead at the end of four in game one of this four game set. and you hear from the players. It's Reds Live pregame is presented by Ray St. Clair Roofing. 
Jim Day with you, and uh, let's follow up, Tom, on uh, what you were talking about earlier about how Kurt Gibson had some very pointed comments about the Ryan Braun situation. He did keep it as a team aspect, but he also is not upset or is many people in baseball that we haven't heard from Ryan Braun publicly. One of the things he said is this. If I get a chance to see Braun, I got a question for him right to his face. Is he about done rehearsing by now? Is he about ready to come out? He's probably practicing at theater school somewhere. So Ryan Braun, we are awaiting reaction from him after he publicly came out and said he was not guilty of these offenses and now suspended by baseball. And some reports say that he is going to publicly say and admit to PED use. But Kurt Gibson, boy, did he stir up some controversy with his comments. And he also wondered, like you said, that 2011 playoff series, what would have happened had Ryan Braun not, in his words, been a cheater? I think a lot of people feel the exact same way as Kurt Gibson does. But he's one of the few that's had the the courage, if you will, use whatever word you so choose, that has come out and, and let his feelings be known. Well, I think every every player is just tired of it. You get lumped in with the cheater category, and nobody wants to be in that situation. If you're a clean player, and obviously there's a whole lot more clean than not, everybody wants it to be on the up and up. So Bronson Arroyo was given a one nothing lead at the end of two. Now he's handed a four to one lead at the end of four. They gave up the game tying home run there in Hill with two outs in the fourth inning. And even the ball game with the Red Sox and the Yankees Ryan Dempster. Looked like he would, had a license to to kill out there on the mound. He was throwing it. A rod seemingly every pitch until he got it. And he did get it. Slow roller that Arroyo will make the play on, and that's all for the Avis to start the Arizona fifth. And right now, time to take a look at our AT&T trivia question: Who are the only three pitchers to make at least 25 starts in each of the last 10 years? Only three of them. Pretty safe bet you're looking at one of them. <laughs> exactly. But what about the other two? Kershaw's got to be in there. No, 10 years. Oh, 10 years. 10 years. Oh, <laughs> 10 years. And only three of them. 25 starts in 10 years. And all three of these guys have had just outstanding major league careers. Arroyo being one, we'll give you that one. There's a fly ball that you will handle for out number two off the bat of D.D. Gregorius. Some pressure on Delgado here if he retires him in this at bat, sends him right back out to the mound after that eight batter inning. No rest for the weary. Two on Delgado. Oyo drops down with that breaking ball. The arm action is so quick. Looks like the ball is coming in as a fastball, and then it just slowly slides away as you swing. See, Arroyo is about as close to a Pitching video game in real life is a gift. <laughs> You're right. Ball gets up there, you take that joystick and slam it to the left. <laughs> Got it.
And that's all for the Diamondbacks on 10 pitches from Arroyo in the fifth. Reds have a 3 1 lead. Toyota dealer, visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. And by JTM Food Group, let's create great dishes together. Along the banks of the Ohio River. Great American ballpark on a picture perfect August summer night. Reds with a 4 to 1 lead, and Frazier jumps on the first pitch in the at bat. And this one a long way to the lawn in center. I think Mr. Delgado forgot about the first at bat. Decided to challenge him with a first pitch fastball again. This time, Frazier didn't miss it. Frozen rope in his first at bat on a fastball, and this time, maybe jumps out of here to dead center. First home run off a right handed pitcher for Frazier since June 11th, and that was off of Matt Garza. And the home run off Garza was to dead center. Boy, Frazier got right on that pitch. Starting to show some signs, perhaps, of, of warming up. Very aggressive, but even that pitch, Tom, he was inside the baseball. When you get around it, you get in a slump. When you get inside, you tend to be able to read the ball a whole lot better. But he was definitely inside of that one and drove it to dead center. 13 home runs, now 56 runs batted in for Todd Frazier. Votto started the three run rally in the fourth inning with a single. Phillips single, Bruce single to knock in Votto, Ludwig double to knock in Phillips. A ground out by Cozart produced a third run and now the home run by Frazier. Leading off this bottom of the fifth and the Reds have their largest lead of the night. Gone swinging Botto and that is the third strikeout tonight for Randall Delgado. Cardinals are on the board. They scored the first inning in Milwaukee. The St. Louis a one nothing lead over the Brewers and the Reds of course beginning play a game and a half behind St. Louis for second in the central but the Reds are only two and a half behind the Pirates for first and make no mistake about it. That is the goal for the Reds first place in the division. Well, the division winner 
this year carries a whole lot more weight than it has in the last few. And really since the wild card came into play. This year if you get into the wild card you don't get the benefits of the three out of five series you get one game. It's almost like a do or die on the last day of the season. All three teams reaching 70 wins. 38 to go for the Reds including tonight. Brandon two out of two a triple a single and a couple of runs scored. Two and one to Brandon Phillips. You know I think the players for the Reds and for the Diamondbacks for that matter. I think they everyone realizes what's at stake. As you finish up August and you head into September. This is a big series for both clubs especially. The Arizona Diamondbacks. The Reds can affect in their season. You put them out of three out of four you sweep them here. You make their trek back awfully difficult. Another cross up and you could see the catcher Nieves awfully frustrated as he threw his right hand into the air. This was supposed to be a change up watch where this ball hits him he doesn't even get the mitt up there. That's frustration. When you call one pitch and the pitcher throws another okay that's a mistake one time. When you do it two or three times during a game. All right I've had. Well, Nieves is not only hurt, he is really angry. You can just tell by the body language. He was shaken up. The umpire was the one who walked all the way out to the mound to give the catcher a little bit of a break. That one is in the air in foul territory. Goldschmidt over near the stands, and that's four rows out of play. Well, those catchers take a beating enough as it is. No doubt. They don't need to have to worry about putting down a sign with nobody on base and having the pitcher not throw the pitch they asked for and then get drilled by it. And we're all guilty of it. Every pitcher has done it. But if you can't see the signs, then you either have to get glasses, or contacts, or have the catcher put, you'll see a lot of times they'll put white out on the fingertips so you can see the signs. Well, you and tell the Avis he is hurt. Yeah, that ball caught him right in the shoulder blade. And even though he did get a little bit of the mint on there, <laughs> that's not a whole lot of fun. Tonight is the fifth time that the Avis has caught Delgado. Miguel Montero caught him eight times. Dave is waiting on Brandon to get back in the box before this 3 2 pitch. Back up through the middle. This will be a third hit for Brandon Phillips. That one a broken bad roller, but you'll take them all day, every day. Well, you were talking about that earlier, Tom, with Ryan Ludwig and Dusty Baker talking about they may not be driven, but a base hit is a base hit is a base hit, and you'll take it every time. Couldn't throw this out there any better with your arm. Other thing you got to remember is after that 16 inning game, the Diamondbacks won yesterday in Pittsburgh. Delgado might be out there a while. They had to go through just about everybody they have, obviously, down in that bullpen. They had a blowout game a night before when Arizona scored 15 runs against the Pirates, but a tight one the night before that. And you know that as a starter coming in. Well, they really put the shift on with Jay at the plate. Singled up the middle last time on the 1 0 fastball. 
They moved Martin Prado over around with Aaron Hill on the second base side, the right field side of second base, I guess I should say. One and two to Jay Bruce. Yeah, they leave Gregorius at his natural position there at shortstop. And you would think, Tom, that, that every team would do it that way. Yep. Your shortstop has more range than any third baseman. So if the ball is hit towards the shortstop hole, at least he's got a chance. If you've got a third baseman over there, if it's not right at him, it's not going to happen. We've seen some teams change it up inside the same game. We've seen the Pirates, if I'm not mistaken, leave Jordy Mercer there sometimes, or Clint Barvis, who's ever playing short. Yes. Then other times they'll move him to the right side and, and pull Alvarez. I think their third baseman over. Depends on where they want the range to be. On swinging is Bruce, and that's a second out of the inning. Four strikeout of the game for Delgado, and here comes Ludwig. MLB.com at bat is celebrating five years as your number one mobile app for live baseball. If you'd like to get more information, text it back to 31826 or visit Reds.com. There's a whole lot of difference between the changeup of Delgado that goes straight down and the one that just tails way off the plate to the right hander. That last pitch very effective. The pitch before, not so much. Ryan Ludwig, an RBI double, his first extra base hit. His first run batted in. Well, we know potentially what getting Ludwig right could mean for this Reds team offensively after the outstanding year he had, especially when they needed him the most last year. You may remember he got off to a very slow start. I mean, Dusty Baker was pretty much flipping coins between Ludwig and Heisey, neither one of which hit the ball well at all through the first month and a half, nearly two months of the season. That went on the ground down to third, and that's all for the Reds in the fifth but they get the home run by Frazier and as we move to the six the Reds enjoying a 5-1 lead. The park. Visit Reds.com for tickets for great seats to the remainder of games this week. Plus, starting tonight, the Reds win, you win. That promo is now in effect. With each Reds win against the Diamondbacks and the Brewers on this homestand, you get $4 off field box seats for the homestand in a series September 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 5th against the St. Louis Cardinals. How about that? So every time they win a game, you knock four bucks off the field box seat price for that Cardinal set. Roll on, baby, roll on. That is a four-game series during the week against the St. Louis Cardinals. A 
I'm not mistaken, that is a Memorial Day, or I mean a Labor Day, I beg your pardon, September the 2nd. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of that following week. Base hit left field by Gerardo Parra. Reds lead 5 1. Top of the order and the leadoff man aboard here in the Arizona sixth. Pretty good piece of hitting here by Parra as he tomahawks that one into left field. The Cowboy, we asked that ATT trivia question. Three starters over the last 10 years have made 25 or more starts in each of those seasons. Arroyo being one, the other two. Mark Burley, CC Sabathi. Pretty good company right there. No doubt. All three of those pitchers have won over 100 games in their major league careers. Two of them gold glovers. Burley and Arroyo. Veterans in every sense of the word. And of course both uh, Burley and Sabathia have won I believe Sabathia had. Did he go to the Yankees by the time they won the World Series? I have to double check that to see if he was a member of that. I don't think he was there yet. No, I think he was still in Milwaukee. So we know Burley has a World Series ring. That was with the White Sox. Mm -hmm. Sabathia does have does a World it? Series ring with those 2009 New York Yankees. Out of play by Adam Eaton, no balls and two strikes. Of course, Arroyo would love to. More than any other category, any other thing you could talk about, he'd like to join Burley and Sabathia with that World Series. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? I beg your pardon. Arroyo, he does have a World Series ring. He got one with 04 with Boston. With Boston. But. He wasn't a regular starter with that right. team. You know what I'm saying. He does have a ring, so he'll always be able to cherish that. But to be a, a part of the starting rotation for a World Series champion, I don't know, Cowboy. At the end of the day, does it make any difference for I, a player? I, I think it does. I think everybody likes to have the ring. But I, I think the, the big issue here for Arroyo is the fact that he has played an integral part in bringing the Reds back to playoff prominence. Yeah, I think it would be super sweet to be able to get that again. And he fooled Eaton badly there. Came with a fastball in the inside corner and had a strike three call. Of course, I don't know if there's a more valued ring on the planet than that 2014 Boston World Series title ring. Major comebacks there. What? Man from Springfield, Ohio, Eaton, fooled there by Arroyo. Six strikeouts now for Bronson. And here's Goldschmidt. It's a big out right here in this game for Arroyo. Four run lead. And going to be a tough play. Arroyo throws. Not going to be in time. Infield hit. Expect that kind of hit <laughs> from the big slugger Goldschmidt. You're guarding against the, the home run or the gap shot, and he dribbles one down the third baseline where nobody can get to the baseball. But what it does do is it extends the inning for a guy that's awfully hot right now in Aaron Hill. Homer his last time up after bouncing into a double play his first time up and Hill now with his hitting streak at 12 consecutive games. Got it. Got him with a fastball in the first pitch of the at bat and now all of a sudden the tying run will come to the plate. Arroyo trying to run the fastball inside, get it on the hands of Hill, and a 
just takes off too far. You hear Dusty Baker talk about this all the time, Tom. Keep them out of slam range. Well, they're in slam range. Now you got to keep them from that. They are loaded for Martin Prado. Two grand slams in his major league career. So you have three out of 12 with the bases loaded so far this season. One out in the inning, and the Reds with a five to one lead. Strike one. Prado tonight is fly to center, singled into left field his last time up. 15 RBIs in his last 16 ball games coming into tonight. He's in a prime situation here. One and one to Prado, and there's strike two. Dropped down a little bit. They got the call. It looked a little bit up, maybe a little bit in, thought Prado. You can see the crouch of Prado as he started for the ball. The ball runs from the outside corner back to the inside corner. I think Prado thought that ball was coming on up and in like it did to Aaron Hill. One and two. Dropped down again, and it served into left field, and this will bring in at least one. They're going to wave around Goldschmidt. He will score. And all of a sudden, it is a two-run ball game. A two strike two run single by Martin Prado makes it a 5 3 Cincinnati lead. Watch this swing by Martin Prado. Almost as though he's sitting down on a stool and still able to spin and reach enough of the baseball to flip it over Cozart's head. You hear so many times about keeping your hands back. Looked like the hands were moving forward, but the hips stayed closed long enough for him to just swat it in the left field. That's what it looked like he did. He just swatted the ball. Well, the pitching coach, Brian Price, out to just settle things down a little bit. Two in, two on, one out, and a two run lead. Kubel coming up. Here is today's whiff brought to you by Head and Shoulders now with a hint of Old Spice. Man coming to the plate, Jason Kubel. 3 2 change up at his first at bat. And a fastball inside. He swings right over the top there. And I'm sure Bronson Arroyo would like to have that same whiff right here. Kubel five home runs, 30 runs batted in, but the two strikeouts so far here tonight. He has Aaron Hill, the runner at second. Prado following the two run single leads at first. Alfredo Reds have action in your bullpen, uh, seemingly pitching every day is Alfredo Simon. at the Reds fourth inning Tom where they were able to string some hits together base runners together that's what the Diamondbacks are doing here Arroyo's got to put a stop to it some way somehow coming from behind and winning games has been a staple of Kirk Gibson's Diamondbacks here in 2014 the second most come from behind wins in the league 36 of them Second only to Atlanta with 38. 
Roller, that is a fair ball. Votto will get the out at second base. So that cuts down potentially the tying run. Tying run now is at first base rather than being in scoring position, and there are two out. It's a good play by Votto. It would have been very easy for him to take that ball that bounced right over the first base bag and just tag first. But he spins with the feet, quick feet, and made an accurate throw to Cozart to get that lead runner. So now Nieves, who has hit a little roller out in front of the mound, was thrown out by Hannigan, then hit a little roller up the first baseline that Arroyo was able to get to and throw him out. Two on, two out, two run lead in the sixth inning, and Nieves waiting. Beat on a fastball for strike one. It's the magic number for Arroyo, 89 miles an hour with the fastball. You add the movement to that, you get a tardy swing as you did with Nieves. Breaking ball and a dandy to get ahead 0 2. Change up right on the outside corner. You see Arroyo roll the fingers over the top. Instead of the ball snapping down and away, it just sinks right to the outside corner. Popped up and playable. And the inning is over as Phillips finds it in foul territory. The Diamondbacks score twice to draw within two. American Ballpark presented by Valpac. 48 bucks. You get four view level tickets, four Reds hats. And you can buy them today as they take on the Milwaukee Brewers. And a reminder, as always, offer subject to availability. Five three Reds lead as they come to bat here in the last of the sixth inning against Arizona starter Randall Delgado. Reds got one in the second inning, a triple by Phillips, sack fly by Kozai. Three runs on four hits in the fourth inning, and then a solo home run by Frazier in the fifth. Kozard, Hannigan, and then Arroyo spot as Reds still have action down in their bullpen. And now they have the left-hander Manny Parra. Saw Simon a little while ago, and now Parra. We may have a Parra versus Parra matchup. Mm -hmm. Of course, Manny hoping that would come with two outs and nobody on. No doubt. 
you've got to think with the action in the Diamondback bullpen that this may be the last inning for Delgado as well. If he can make it that far. Three and one on Kozai. And a high pop up. Well, he just missed out. A little bit underneath it. A lot underneath it. And Gregorius for out number one. So now handing into his lined out to Goldschmidt at first and drawn a walk. No one stands yet in the on deck circle for the Reds. We mentioned Arroyo, and here comes Jack Hanahan. Left handed batter. And apparently, we will see him bat for the Red starter, Bronson Arroyo. Well, if Hanahan can somehow pull a double out of his hat here, you may end up seeing Xavier Paul. It seems to be the one that Dusty goes to in an RBI situation. Arroyo down there with the helmet on. I mentioned pulled a double. A little too far foul. Indeed, Hannigan does get a base hit here. Do you do you buck Arroyo or do you bring on a pinch hitter? Kind of a catch 22 there. You'd like to do whatever you can to get you to the plate. The runner at second. A gone swing is Hannigan, and that's out number two. And Hannahan will indeed bat for Arroyo, who goes six innings tonight, allows seven hits, three runs, all learned. Once again, he does not walk a batter. He does hit a batter. So he's not walked a batter in his last three starts. And he strikes out six. Arroyo had fanned seven or more batters in each of his last two starts. He had not done that since 2007 in consecutive starts. And he'll come up one short of reaching that number here tonight. Help from what has been a spectacular Reds bullpen once they've kind of righted the ship following the primary injuries to both Marshall and then Broxton. The Reds will need the final nine outs from that bullpen to get Arroyo his 12th win of the year. There are a lot of different guys in that bullpen that have stepped up and really accelerated. Their years, Manny Parra being one of them. And you were talking earlier about J.J. Hoover. I mean, those two guys. I mean, we talk about Sam Lecure a lot, but Hoover and Parra have just been—they've uh, been phenomenal. That's the only word to describe it. Uh, really, the entire bullpen. It's been a phenomenal story down there. Number one bullpen in all of baseball a season ago. Well, let's face it, after you made the deal by Broxton, it's not to say a lot of guys didn't have good years down there because we know they did. But most of the pub came from a trio of Chapman, Broxton, Marshall. A lot of other guys had very good years. But when those two of those setup guys go down, Marshall for virtually the entire year, and for guys to do what they have done has just been phenomenal. And it's been a collective effort. They've all picked each other up. Figured out some way, somehow, to get the ball with some semblance of regularity to Aroldis Chapman in the ninth inning. Saw Marshall out throwing on the flat ground earlier today. They're hoping there's a chance they could still get him back. I guess the news is not nearly as promising, especially when you consider that he is a starter, referring to Johnny Cueto. But perhaps 
And you always say perhaps because there have been a couple of times where we flirted on the optimistic side on Marshall's return and it just hasn't happened. Getting over. First one, two, three innings since the first inning for Delgado. Bullpen coming on, trying to protect a two run lead. On the game summary. The Reds had four consecutive hits to begin the fourth inning. Bruce, an RBI single, was a third. And then Ryan Ludwig, his first extra base hit, driving in his first run of his 2013 year. Reds scored three times in that fourth inning and had a four to one lead. Made it five to one on a home run by Todd Frazier leading off the fifth inning. For Frazier, that's his 13th home run of the year. Arizona got two back into six against Arroyo, whose night is over. Both of them coming on a two strike, two run single by Martin Prado. And now in the hands of the Cincinnati bullpen. These two teams separated by five games for the second and final wild card spot, looking ahead of the National League postseason. And the Reds with a two run lead, and here's Manny Parra. To face D.D. Gregorius leading off the inning. It's ball one. Far has only allowed two earned runs in his last 27 appearances. As you see those numbers there. When you talk about making an adjustment after being placed on the DL early in the season. Confidence is everything. Ball in behind one and oh, and now comes back with a strike to Gregorius. A pinch hitter standing in the on deck circle. That is Delgado's spot. Right handed batting infielder Matt Davidson with a bat in hand. Breaking, oh. go ahead, Tom. Breaking ball has been really key for Manny Parr. Not just the big sweeping curveball, but tightening up the breaking ball. He calls it a slider. It seems to be using that much more than the normal curveball. Off the glove of Vado, that took a funny hop. Looked like it took that last hop, made a bad one on Vado, and that will allow Gregorius to reach base. You look at Phillips, he got to this ball quickly, but Gregorius, we all know about his speed when he played for the Reds. He didn't take it for granted and he was hustling all the way. Therefore, there was no play as that ball caromed over to Phillips. So the tying run comes to the plate. That'll be scored an infield hit for Gregorius. And now the batter, Matt Davidson, brought up on the 11th a little more than a week ago. Made his major league debut. 
rated as a Diamondbacks fourth best prospect. And this meeting on the mound by Brian Price is to discuss exactly what you just mentioned, Tom. Scouting report on Davidson. You remind your guy on the mound exactly how you want to go about pitching to him. What you talked about in your pitchers' meetings prior to the game today. Now it's about execution. Been a real good summer for Matt Davidson. He won the Major League Baseball All Star Futures Game Most Valuable Player Award. Hit a two run home run at City Field back in mid July. And he also won the Triple A All Star Home Run Derby. So that's a mighty good summer for this young man. Pulled on the breaking ball for strike one. Well, that's why Kirk Gibson sends him to the plate right here. You hit a ball out of the ballpark right now, and you've got a whole new ball game. Signed by the Diamondbacks is a supplemental first round pick in the first year player draft in 2009. This guy has put to the back to back to back three outstanding minor league seasons. He just turned 22 years old. But your point just turned 23. 20 home runs, 106 runs batted in at single A. Then the next year, 23 home runs, 76 batted in at double A. And now this year, his first full year at the triple A level. And that's gas thrown by him right there at 93. One and two to count. Fastball running away from Davidson after the breaking ball inside. Just a bit tardy. Up there, and that went all the way back to the screen. Well, I think Ryan Hannigan was looking for an off speed pitch, and that ball looked like it caught him off the right shin guard. See, Hannigan, that, that never got leather. Well, that's a helpless feeling behind the plate. Seen that a couple of times tonight. Twice from Delgado and now once here from a Rens pitcher. So the runner out there at second base with nobody out here in the Arizona seventh inning and now the 2 2 on Davidson and the ground ball to third. This will look the runner back and that's out number one. So that cross up cost the Reds a double point. That ball was hit right at Frazier and that would have been a tailor made double play ball. One on, one out. One out of three in the game. Robbed of a second hit is actually his first at bat. Robbed of a hit by Votto on a rocket down to first base. He has since struck out, single to left, and scored in the sixth inning. Are looking Gregorius back at second base and coming to the plate. And it's low ball one. We have another left handed batter next in Adam Eaton. Then you go three straight right handed batters Goldschmidt, Hill, Prado. So 
Pyro will have a chance to try and get out of this inning facing back to back left handed batters. One and one to Gerardo Parra. JJ Hoover is up in the Reds bullpen just in case we get to those right handed hitters. So when that lineup for the Diamondbacks turned right handed, it turned right handed in a hurry. Goldschmidt. Yeah, if they get to Goldschmidt in this inning, the Reds will be clinging perhaps to a lead at that point. Right now it stands at two. You have one on, one out. DEFCON one. Mm -hmm. Off the inside corner. Like Gary Darling, the home plate umpire gave up on that pitch. The breaking ball started in. You could see him raise up as the ball started to break to the inside corner. Hannigan held it there a long, long time. Of course, Hannigan was set up outside. Missing badly again. Three and one to count on Pyra and Manny Pyra, just not quite as sharp so far here tonight. Well, the breaking balls are breaking, but normally that's been a pitch he's been able to throw for strikes. And tonight, they are out of the strike zone. In the air, left center field, and Chu will track it down for the second out of the inning. That's a big out right there with one more to go. Well, it's a big out not only for Para, but it's also a big out for the Reds. As you mentioned earlier, Tom, the last thing you want in this inning is the big hammer to come to the plate, and that's Goldschmidt. So here's Eaton. He bounced one over the head of Arroyo, an infield single in the first inning. He has since lined out to center and was called out on strikes. A fastball that got the inside corner in the two run sixth inning. One on, two out. Reds lead by a pair. Bouncer over the mound. Cozart is there. The inning is over, and that's all for Arizona. Well done by Parr to get out of the inning. After the leadoff man reached.
like prizes, you could be featured on Reds Live after an upcoming game right here on Fox Sports Ohio. So be part of the fun Friday at 6 at the Holy Grail in the Banks. Our voting is underway for the next Fox Sports Ohio girl. You can log on to girls.foxsportsohio.com. That's girls.foxsportsohio.com. And vote for your chance, for your choice, to join Sarah and Christine as a Fox Sports Ohio girl. The voting ends two days from now. So the Diamondbacks will go to their bullpen, and we see a guy we didn't see all that long ago when the Reds were out in San Diego. Left-hander Joe Thatcher. We were there when they traded him Joe away. Kennedy. Brought Ian Kennedy into the Padres, and Diamondbacks get this left-hander out of the bullpen. Well, he's got some funky motion, does he not, for, for a left-hander. Really steps off towards the first base dugout and high three quarters side winding action. Got you. When you're left handed, watch where he comes from. He steps all the way towards the first base dugout. That's what makes him fall across the body. But it also gives him tremendous deception. The high hold, the step across the body, it allows Thatcher to really hide the ball until the final second. That's why you saw Chu really having to jump late at the fastball in. And that one banged into center field. That'll be a base hit. So Chu on board for the second time tonight. A breaking ball from the left-hander Thatcher. This one didn't quite have the depth down and away that the pitch previous did stayed up it would have been a strike either way but Chu hits it right off the good part of the barrel now Frazier one for three lined out to left field his first time up Popped up to second inning, the third, then on the first pitch in the fifth inning from Delgado, he hammered one of the berm and straight away center field for his 13th home run of the year. Reds with a 2 1 lead is a bat against Thayer Thatcher here in the seventh inning. Delgado gives up five, seven hits in six innings. Struck out six, walked three. You're Dusty Baker, you get the leadoff batter aboard. He can scratch out a run here. I'm sure he'd be awfully happy. As you said earlier, Tom, this Diamondbacks club has made a habit of coming back late in ball games. I mean, they've been one of those teams that if they're in the game late. And then when you turn the page to extra innings, they've just been ridiculously good. They've won 13 of their 18 extra inning games. But they've gotten so many dramatic game-ending hits, walk-off wins, come-from-behind wins. You look at their four-hole hitter, Goldschmidt. He's got six ninth-inning home runs. Razor started to swing at the breaking ball. They appealed, and Jerry Meal says he did not go around. And Goldschmidt from a ninth inning into extra innings has hit seven of his 30 home runs. That's amazing. I know. That's getting it done. And this is a tailor made, as you like to say, Cowboy, double play ball.
Tonight's IGS bringing the energy has the highest career batting average all time against the Arizona Diamondbacks, a franchise which began play in 1998. Manny Ramirez with the highest batting average against him, although he did not get nearly as many at bats as, say, a Dante Bichette or a Carlos Ruiz playing inside their division. Joey behind only Man Ran. So Manny Ramirez was turned loose by the Texas Rangers playing at their minor league triple-a level recently after they brought him over following his stint overseas one and one Nevada Cardinals after watching Milwaukee tie the game at the bottom of the third at 1 1 St. Louis scores a run in the fourth so 2 1 Cardinals with Milwaukee batting in the bottom of the fourth inning at Miller Park Breaking ball away to Votto, two balls and a strike, and getting started in about 45 minutes from now, it'll be the Pirates in San Diego. A very limited schedule around Major League Baseball tonight. Three and one to Votto. Got a guy three for three standing in the on deck circle. You got to get Votto here if you're Joe Thatcher. And there's ball four to Joey Votto, so he's a two out base runner. Well, right now, let's go to Los Angeles. It's a Fox Sports One game break. Thank you very much. We'll be dialed in later tonight. Reds beginning play two and a half behind the front running Cardinals in the central. A game and a half behind St. Louis for second place. I think if you're a Pirate fan or a Cardinal fan or a Red fan, this is as good as it gets down the stretch. As much as you'd like for your team to be the one that's way out in front. It's still pretty cool to have a pennant chase as you head into September. And you have all the, the emotions. The only thing right now that is missing, and the Reds would really like to make it a completely moot point by taking three out of four, maybe sweeping the Diamondbacks. That's a tall order. This Arizona team coming in having won eight of their last 11 and playing very good baseball. But the one element that is missing is the, is the true element of danger. And what I mean by that is right now there is not a team that's really, really hot on your heels. Five games can be, we know. I mean, the Reds have gone from seven back to two and a half back in a week. Right. But, you know, right now there's not that pressure of one or two teams are a game and a half behind you for the final wild card spot. But the Diamondbacks can change that. Yes. In a four day period. They can. And the Reds are trying to keep that from happening. Oh, and two on Phillips. And it's one on and fouled away. But you, you know the point I'm trying to make oh, here. Yeah. When, you, when you go look at the American League and you start talking about the one. Stack them up. I mean, you got, you know, Oakland, Baltimore three behind them, Cleveland four and a half behind them. A couple of other teams with a chance to get within five tonight. Any of those teams within a hot run of changing places quickly. Oh, and to the count. Thatcher appears to be more comfortable against right handed batters than he does against lefties. And that's the reason that the Diamondbacks got it, is as a lefty specialist out of their bullpen. Ow. He went around, and Phillips can't believe it. He's saying, that ball hit me on the arm. And Phillips can't believe it. Up plate umpire Gary Darling telling him, you swung at the ball. 
It hit him in the right knee. But he had already swung. by Kings Honda in the Kings Auto Mall. Visit KingsHondaUSA.com. Brandon Phillips still pointing at that right knee. He got dinged right on it. I don't know if Phillips was maybe saying that the ball hit his back before it hit his knee. I don't know. I think he was saying that I didn't swing. But it looked like from the side view that his bat came through the zone. He tried to check it. A lot of times when you've got a hard breaking ball like that, you start your swing, you miss it, and the ball breaks all the way to that back foot. That's called the back foot slider. That's where you're aiming. And now taking over on the mound, he has been simply spectacular. Over his last 22 appearances, 25 and a third consecutive scoreless innings. For J.J. Hoover, the last run he allowed came in that June series against the St. Louis Cardinals. That is a long time ago. And trying to keep it rolling here tonight, spins a breaking ball in there, strike one, and he'll go right through the very heart of this Arizona order. Goldschmidt, the National League leader in runs, batted in. Aaron Hill with a 12-game hitting streak. And then Martin Prados knocked in two runs tonight. And just threw a fastball right by Goldschmidt. It's 0-2. Well, everything that Hoover is doing right now is spot on. And it's all from the breaking ball. When he found the release point for the breaking ball, the grip for the breaking ball, he has been awfully good. Back in April, the breaking ball was virtually non-existent. He still had the velocity on the fastball and the location. But he just could not get the breaking ball where he wanted it. Now, much better. Got ahead 0-2, and, and now the count even 2-2 two two to Goldschmidt. Takes off hand again a couple of times, and now the break even pitch. Came back with another fastball. That one, the fastest he's thrown so far at 95. But it's fouled away to stay two and two. Hoover likes to start that fastball just a bit off the outside corner and run it back. We have not seen a breaking ball since pitch number one. Foul tipped into the mitt of Hannigan, and that's a strikeout for Hoover on Goldschmidt. Here's our Mazda pitch by pitch. First pitch breaking ball by J.J. Hoover. And from then on, it is just straight gas. Up and away. Away again. 
Now he gets it close, fouled off. Now look at this. Blue by you. <laughs> it's that old Linda Ronstadt classic, right? Yeah, sure. It's a great song. <laughs> yeah. She could jam a little bit. She was. She was a rocker at one time. She was. Although that one slowed it down quite a bit. That yeah. one popped up behind the plate. And out of play, interesting, you bring up Linda Ronstadt. She is an Arizona girl, born and raised. They like a little country out that way. Mm -hmm. Better believe it. Certainly a, a great part of America, the Southwest. Reds enjoying their spring training out there. And I'm happy to say. My bride born and raised in the Grand Canyon State as it is known. That's right. My firstborn was born there. That's what you're going to say, your first state. girlfriend. No. That's a long way from Alabama. Uh, my firstborn, <laughs> my daughter Emily was born in Scottsdale. Yep. Both of our kids were born there. Great place. Three and one to Hill. You were out there, I'd imagine. Were you in minor league ball or triple A? I mean, minor spring, league ball or spring training? Spring training. Spring training, okay. Because they had their triple A yeah. team there, the in, Giants. I was in triple A in Phoenix as well. Weak pop up that'll go to the outfield grass, but Phillips able to backpedal there and very impressive. The first two hitters for JJ Hoover here in the eighth. That shows you how important that well located fastball down and away with good velocity can be. A 3 1 pitch to a good fastball hitter and just a weak pop up there to second base. So make it an even round number 26 consecutive scoreless innings the longest among all major league relievers. That is a wave. Right now on which J.J. Hoover is on. Two outs Prado the batter and that's a difference between Hoover early in the year and now not only the good breaking ball but Cowboy he would infrequently if ever throw that on a first pitch he's done it to two of the three batters here in the eighth tonight and it's not the slam dunk breaking ball but it puts it in the back of the mind of the hitter when you have to stay back even for a split second <laughs> it's tough to catch up with a 95 mile an hour heater much less when it's well located down and away. Milwaukee is tied St. Louis that is a 2 2 game. They're now in the bottom of the fifth inning. That's at 94 gas we were talking about. Better located there. And that ball is down in the hollow of the knee, the bottom of the strike zone. It's a tough pitch to get to, even when you know it's coming or you think it's going to be there. Tough place to get the bat to. One two pitch. This is away. There were so many minor league coaches that did not want to trade J.J. Hoover from the Braves. He's got that extra heart and intestinal fortitude that you just can't teach. Starting to realize his potential now from a big league pitching standpoint, not just throwing. He's always been able to throw. He's learning how to pitch and well at it. 2-2 two, two on Prado. Breaking ball off the outside corner. So Prado figures to get a pitch to hit here. Want to make him earn his way on with a two run lead in the eighth inning. We get the same pitch that Aaron Hill got. Gas. And that's all she wrote. Hoover through Goldschmidt, Hill, and Prado in one, two, three fashion. Reds bat in the bottom of the eighth with a 2 1 lead over Arizona.
five runs, eight hits for the Reds, three runs, eight hits for Arizona. Reds back in the bottom of the eighth inning. Thatcher still out there to face Jay Bruce, and we more than likely see a change. Arizona with a right hander ready in their bullpen. Well, so far, Thatcher's gotten the righties better than he's gotten the lefties. Hadn't retired a lefty yet. Well, we know who's getting ready in the Reds' bullpen. Uh, yeah, that would be the missile. Gone swinging Jay Bruce. He looked pretty good against that particular left. Uh, yeah. So Thatcher gives him an inning and a third if indeed they lift him. And here comes Kirk Gibson. They have Will Harris, a right hander, ready in their bullpen. Inning and a third to hit two strikeouts. He did his job. So Ludwig coming up. He'll be followed by Cozart. Harris will come on to pitch, and this will be our skyline chili. Called to the bullpen. Reds lead 5 3 in the eighth. We'll be back. First extra base hit, first run batted in for Ryan Ludwig coming in. This is seventh game. His sixth game since returning off the disabled list. After injuring his shoulder, which of course required surgery following that opening day slide at third base. Harris, a right-hander, on from the Arizona bullpen, and a first pitch breaking ball is in there. Strike one to Ryan. Good year for Harris. No doubt about it. Every once in a while he'll have a little difficulty getting ahead in the count, but he can throw that breaking ball for a strike. It makes him effective. Diamondbacks thought they were going to have a great bullpen when this season began. I mean they had JJ Putz was their closer. They had Heath Bell they had brought in after a disastrous season in Miami, but of course he had a couple of great years there where he was an all-star. In San Diego, they had Ziegler down there and David Hernandez. I mean, they had a bunch of guys that they were very, very excited about. Well, Ziegler's down there closer. Well, all of those guys have at one point or another been handed an opportunity, and some of the guys three and four times opportunities to take the closer's role and just could not do it. Seventh and eighth inning, lights out. Ninth inning, Hammer time. One and two on Ryan Ludwig. 92 mile per hour fastball. He can't catch up with and right now to bring you up to date on what's happening with the Cardinals and the Brewers. Here's Fox Sports one game break. All 
Ruddy. We'll look forward to you keeping us up to date. Over at Fox Sports 1 out in Los Angeles after the big kickoff over the weekend. Harris with that over the top breaking ball and then the ability to ride that fastball up after getting ahead. Cozart tonight is officially 0 for 2, but he does have a pair of runs batted in. Sack fly RBI in the second inning. RBI ground out in the fourth. And then fouled out to short in the sixth. Well, you were talking earlier about the Reds being the top club in the National League as far as driving in runs with less than. Let me make sure I get this right. <laughs> Not having two outs. <laughs> I'm saying it wrong. With no outs or what? You're talking about the, the uh, about the earning the college degree, yeah, like yeah. the gold Yeah, I couldn't get that right either. <laughs> Sometimes it just doesn't take a hit to drive in a run. Just put the ball in the play. Good job by Will Harris as the Diamondbacks strike out the side here in the eighth. Tonight, Gerardo Parra with a bullet down in Votto, and what a pick that was. And that turned out to be a big out because the next two batters had base hits in that Arizona first inning. Our John Morrell hot dog. Play of the game. Turned in by Joey Votto. All right. We have played it. And now it is time for the ninth. The Reds with a 2 1 lead over Arizona, trying to widen their lead in the wild card race over the Diamondbacks to six. Heisey takes over in left field for Ryan Ludwig, and you know who's getting the ball on the mound in a save situation. Araldus Chapman looking for save number 31. Back at home. Hey, this guy has had some bumps in the road this year, but confidence not shaken. As you go around the league once, twice, three, four times. The years start to pile up. Everyone knows what they're going to get. And when you make a mistake, sometimes tough things happen. But as a closer, you have to have a very short memory. And for Aroldis Chapman right now, it's all about tonight. Five blown saves the entire year for Chapman. And of course he blew a save his most recent chance that was over the weekend in Milwaukee on Friday night he allowed that home run game ending home run off the bat of Jonathan Lucroy the Milwaukee catcher and it's strike one to the left handed batting Jason Kubel. 
A bit of a surprise that Kubel is batting leading off this ninth inning. Not bad, all things considered, small sample size, but they aren't a left handed batters, a lot of them out there that have a hit in three at bats against Chapman. Swung on and fouled out of play, and a roll is quickly ahead 0 and 2. They have A.J. Pollock, a backup outfielder. Switch hitting Cliff Pennington. Those two guys get a lot of playing time available on the bench, but they're getting near the bottom of their order. So we may see both of them shortly. Hundred miles per hour from Chapman misses high. One ball and two strikes. Chapman got beat on that home run to the light right handed batting Luke Roy on the slider. And maybe Kurt Gibson knew exactly what he should have been doing. Kubel now two out of four in his career against Chapman. And now all of a sudden the tying run will stroll to the plate here in the Arizona night. Now Jason Kubel's been around a long time. He's a good fastball hitter. And you pretty much know what you're going to get with Chapman on the mound. It's going to be the old number one. Bottom line is you have to make sure the ball is down in the zone. And that's exactly what he does there. Short and quick to the baseball. Well, here's Nieves who has one home run all year long. Tapper. Kozoy will get the out at second. They try to turn it and they do turn it. Oh my goodness, can you believe that? That was a big league double play turn by Brandon Phillips. The Reds may be last in the National League in turning double plays, but you'd never know it with that turn there. Check out Phillips to throw in the air. And a great feed by Zach Cozart. Well, how do you get that much on the throw when you're airborne? That is just a marvelous double play. Starting with Cozart, that was not an easy play. And the reaction and the emotion from Phillips. That brings the fans to their feet. Now Arizona goes to their bench. Cliff Pennington will bat for D.D. Gregorius. Strike one. Boy, it is moments like this, Tom, where October is in the air. hit into right field by Pennington and once more the tying run comes to the plate. A.J. Pollock will come up and bat for the pitcher Harris. Both base hits very guided swings but they have been down in the zone and in the middle of the plate. They talk about all the time the guys that throw as hard as Chapman does they generally if they get hurt you teach pitchers to stay down in the zone but guys that throw it as hard as Chapman does where they get is hurt. where they get hurt. Pollock now the batter. And it's in there strike. Back on the slider. Down. Six home runs for Pollock. We are in the ninth inning. Reds it out away from a game one win. In the air, and this will do it. Chu is there. Reds win the opener of this four game series against the Arizona Diamondbacks, a team that began the night five behind them for the final wild card spot in the National League. And now that number swells to six.
Nothing like beating the guys that are chasing you. And this is what the Reds set out to do as they came back home from the five and two trip. Eliminate any hopes that the Diamondbacks have. They are one step closer.